This is the Dane Moore MBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks coming in Monday morning. It's, I guess, Monday afternoon now. It's March 25th. And we have a full weekend of Wolves games to get to on today's show with Jace. Uh, wins over both Cleveland and Golden State this weekend. Two games, when you looked at the schedule, maybe after Cat got hurt, that you go, eh, those might be losses. Uh, they weren't. They beat Cleveland by 13 on Friday, beat Golden State by four last night. The Wolves do not look much worse for the wear since Cat last played 10 games ago. Jason, quickly run through some numbers here. Uh, they have about the same winning percentage um, in the, the time that Cat played versus the time that uh, he's been out 43 and 19 before the injury, six and three since, uh, with the three losses being pretty reasonable ones. Loss at Cleveland on the second night of a road, road back to back. Loss to the Lakers without Gobert and Anderson, and then a loss to the Nuggets without all three of Gobert, Reed, and Towns. Uh, offensively, they're about the same 17th. Before the injury, 14th in this time. Afterwards, the offensive ratings are nearly identical. Uh, they're playing faster since Cat has been out. They were dead last in transition opportunities before Cat went down up to 19th in this two, three-week time. Since, they're also shooting and making more threes uh, since Cat's been down. But they are taking way fewer shots at the rim and shooting way fewer three free throws. That's where we kind of see Cat's absence uh, show up the most, at least offensively. And then defensively, they were first before the cat injury. They're 10th in the time since, which is probably mostly about Gobert uh, also missing four of those nine games. And you see that in the numbers by opponents getting to the rim and free throw lines significantly more uh, than before. They're also limiting transition opportunities a lot more uh, with with cat out. No team has allowed less transition offense against them since March 7th when cat got hurt. Jason, it's not that this team couldn't use Cat. That's definitely not where I'm going with this. Uh, but his absence has not reclassified the Wolves. They have not fallen out of that Thunder Nuggets tier. Uh, I think some people would say, well, of course, they have Nas Reed. Like, <laughs> um, they're fine. I think the answer is probably a little bit more nuanced than that. Uh, what would you say has sort of fueled this ability to functionally be no worse for the wear uh, without Cat? I just like that before the podcast started, you're like, hey, just so you know, I'm going to talk for like 90 seconds to two minutes to start here. And I was like, okay, okay, status quo. <laughs> <laughs> I got I to gotta tee it up. You know, I was thinking about it. I, 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 do, I know I do that. I know I do that. But then I, I, was listening, I, I listened to no, I listened to Low Post uh, this weekend, and Zach does that way more. He goes for like five, six minutes, and then the person says hi. And then it like comes back in. So I was like, you know. If Zach Lowe over dominates the beginning of podcasts, I can, I can. If your name is on it, this is the rule. Yeah, yeah. If your sure, name is on sure, it. Sure, sure, sure. Talk as much as you want, and everybody else is just there. Like exactly. This is your world. I'm living in it. Yes, once a week, for an hour. <laughs> right. It's right. nice. It's a nice place to visit. Um, but uh, welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I think the thing. I mean, just those numbers. Like, I'll talk more about like why why they're kind of succeeding in my mind without cat anyway. But the transition defense thing is kind of wild considering the three point volume is so high. Like yeah. one often really does lead to the other. Um, like if you shoot threes, you miss threes. It often long rebounds goes the other way. But mm -hmm. like I think it is that the floor is always really balanced and like they're coming the threes. It's not like the the jack up isolation like mm -hmm. bad look where like one guy's at the top of the key and others aren't. Um, I don't know. I think the quality of threes has a lot to do with that. Uh, but I, I just think that's impressive, uh, basically, like the transition thing. And I know like, you know, like Nas or even Kyle is probably a little bit, you know, Nas for sure, faster than Carl. But like, I, I don't know if it's just floor balance or whatever, but that's really impressive in my mind that that the transition defense has been so good while putting up a pretty high volume of threes. Yeah. So the the volume of threes is up, but yeah. just because I, I wrote this all down before, it's not like it. The main reason for that is they'd never shot a lot of threes. Yeah. So they have not, they're, they're still 20th in three point frequency in this, mm -hmm. in this time, but they are shooting more, which to your point would do that, but it's not like watching a Pacers game right. or right. some of those teams where you're like, okay, or Mavericks. I feel like that. It's a, I, I, I think about a Mavericks defensive possession. It usually starts with a missed three long rebound. The other team starts going uh, yep. the other way. I think, I mean, They've been pretty good about getting back in transition defense all year. Even yes, with agreed, hundred percent. Which yep. was is one of the 
craziest sort of developments, I think, of this whole season because that was such a problem in, in the cat and going bear minute. So I think just maybe that whole idea of like, hey, this is what we do best. If we get all five of us back there, guard a guy, particularly if we can guard our main guy. I thought that was a kind of a problem in the first half last night. It was just cross matches all the time. But if the Wolves can get all five of their guys back, matched up with the guy that they would like to guard, I think they know that it's hell to score on them when when they do that. So there's just, whether it's subconsciously or what, like, like hey, if we get back out, we're probably just going to get a steal here or something like that, and we're going to go the other way in uh, in a second. But, uh, but yeah, man, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I, I was trying to think about it this morning of, like, does any of this shock me? And I think I was kind of shocked at the beginning of the first couple of games of how much it did seem like they missed Cat. Right. That kind of that Indiana and Cleveland game. There were just these stretches where you're like, you know, you could use another, particularly then once they started having some guys injured. And I was like, maybe this is going to hurt a little bit more than I thought. Maybe Nas Reed and Kyle Anderson isn't enough to sort of do it. But I think the the point is they have guys who can come in for cat. And those guys have kind of reached this comfort of knowing they're in that role now. It took a few games. They can also draw yeah. on last season's experience a little bit too they just feel comfortable playing this way without cat which is crazy i mean how many teams can say that about losing a player who's on a supermax or signed to a supermax contract and just be like yeah we could pretty well like figure this out you know it's like one thing for the rockets to do it without shen goon you know right but like it's it's kind of in theory it should be a, a very difficult proposition for the wolves but they're they're making it work yeah, and I agree. With, there has to be like some grace period of like a game or two where you're like, okay, it's a pretty big shock to the system because we have to do things differently. So like we need <laughs> a game a back to back yeah, on the road. Yeah, as soon right, as it right, right, right. Against like decent teams. Um, and so it is like a, we have to a like realize we can't play the exact same way, and then mm -hmm. b adjust to the new way in which we have to play. Um, so the fact that that I guess over the course of like three games there seemed to be really all the transition period they needed mm -hmm. uh, was pretty impressive. But I, I think you can go back to last year and be like, oh, they weren't that great without Cat last year. They weren't all that great with Cat. Like yeah. it, this is now two years in a row where the with Cat and the without Cat versions look pretty similar, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, it's it was a 500 team with and without him last year. And now it's a significantly, it's a really good team either yeah. way. Um, and like you said, that's not to say like they don't need Cat or Cat doesn't help them. Uh, but I think it's, it's a big props to them for having so many different like finch has said last year they were chameleon like and they wanted an identity this year mm -hmm. and they've certainly found that particularly defensively like night after night you know what you're going to get from minnesota but they're adaptable too like sure. they haven't lost that adaptability just because they have an identity mm -hmm. um and i think that's that's really cool i think that's a credit to the players i do think it's a huge credit to the coaching staff like i i really do like they are they're pretty quickly adaptable especially in terms of like in the midst of an 82 game season where the games are coming so fast and furious uh they're on top of it they're quickly thinking how do we adjust the lineups how do we adjust the way we're playing here what different messages are we saying which guys do we go up to and be like hey need a little more out of you mm -hmm. um I think that's a big credit to them. And then guys obviously stepping up. I've always said like this team, it's greatest strength. I think is that one through 10, six through 10, for sure. They are better than everybody else is six through 10. Yeah. I firmly do believe that. Um, maybe it's like them in Boston and that is it. And I think Minnesota's might just very well be better than Boston's even. So, but starting lineup, starting lineup, you can probably go blow for blow with Minnesota. Some teams certainly can, but six through 10, I believe they're better. Um, and so, yeah, when you lose guys, you are probably more equipped than anybody else um, mm -hmm. to absorb it. I mean, we've asked Finch 15 different ways about playing without Cat and, and what that will will change and everything. He was asked about it last night after the game and I think kind of gave a little bit of a different different answer given that now they've, they've seen it for a while. Here's, here's Finch on kind of what they've learned playing without Cat. I mean, of course, a little bit, yeah. I mean, we, we um, obviously play a lot more spread lineups, you know, um, uh, you know, we're not trying to, I don't think I've called a post up play for a while, you know, um, and, um, you know, we're, we're playing a little bit faster in transition. Um, you know, I think we have like multiple, got multiple handlers out there to, to be able to initiate, um, and the ball's kind of, you know, flowing through everyone's hands a little bit earlier through that. So, yeah, I mean, we, but we've, we've played this way a lot last year, so we're pretty comfortable with it. Along those lines, your highest volume three-point games have all pretty much come 
in this stretch here with with Carl. Alex. Yeah. Uh, is it just kind of a product of what you were just talking about, or is, is it was this a conscious effort, maybe when you guys were talking about what things would look like, you know, as Carl recovers? Yeah, I mean, um, we just you know I've, I'm, I've always been a big believer that. Um, the shooting comes from the spacing, right? Like if we if we space well and we create the right advantages, then we should be able to get to the right shots from the three point line. I mean, Nas is uh, committed to taking eight threes a game. You know, Mike t uh, Ant, sorry, took an, uh, took eight. Um, so guys are just committed to taking the three, um, and particularly when it's been created for them. And that's really, we haven't made a conscious decision to say, hey, we need to shoot more threes because Cat's not here. It, it's like it's just a, a, a byproduct of our spacing. Jace, you know, it's I, I don't know what it, it makes me think when he's talking there about spacing and how much we were so frustrated with spacing with this team earlier, you know, in the season. And it was obvious right, that there was there was times when it was a major issue. This team does lead the league at three point percentage. And yeah. it is true with what he is saying off of that, that spacing equals uh, the, the boost in, in three-point percentage, then this team doesn't have a, a spacing problem. And I think it doesn't have a spacing problem right now. Even though Kyle Anderson's minutes are up, I think it's because it's of the nine guys they're playing night to night now, they have two non-shooters at most that play. Kyle Anderson and Rudy Gobert, and that's okay. He mentioned the the two guards thing there, which is you add Monte Morris to the mix there. Jordan McLaughlin's shot comes around. You have, I mean, God, it's crazy how well those guys are shooting from three this year. Yeah. J Mac, 49%. Monte Morris, 42% since he's got here. Mike Conley, 43%. Nikhil Alexander Walker, 38%. Yeah. And so you have shooting with those two out there. You also have more ball control. You have more handlers. You also have Kyle Anderson as like a playmaking four out there. One stat I didn't say was they were 25th in turn offensive the turnovers they're they're committing before Cat got hurt. They fourth fewest turnovers uh, since that's been happened since Cat's been hurt, and they've started playing two point guards, two handlers all the time. They're controlling the ball a lot better, and they're shooting it uh, a lot better. And I think that is a product of the the players that have kind of needed to be plugged into the rotation, not just one player you know, taking all 35 of Cat's minutes, but this kind of by committee. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, and the spread, I mean, it, the turnover thing is like, there's no Cat who obviously has some games really does get frustrated and is turnover prone. And like, when you are playing these point guards and they are ball control point guards, like they are guys who will yeah, always right. be like really high. Like Monte Morris's turnover percentage is like sub 4%, which is like wild. Mm -hmm. Um it's, that's insane. Mike Conley, obviously, we know what he does. Jordan McLaughlin, very smart player. Like, if, if he is turning the ball over, it's trying to make a play that will probably lead to a bucket. Um, so, like, you, it's it's taking away somebody who maybe makes more turnovers and it is putting in guys who don't. And then it is also, like, with a spread out offense they're playing right now, it makes the floor so much easier to see. It makes the decision simpler to make. Um, there's just never congestion. It really doesn't feel like that because, like, even Rudy – is oftentimes you know like like Mike Conley says kind of in like the the flat spot of the hoop there like it's it's mm -hmm. kind of dunkerish but sometimes it's a little bit more spread out too like it doesn't feel like he's clogging anything by any means and so often then when he's running screen and roll it's not clogging anything it's putting pressure on the rim that is sucking in the defense um, mm -hmm. and making other reads really easy so like there there is no problem with spacing right now even when Kyle and Rudy are out there Kyle oftentimes is spacing and when he gets the ball he makes the decision of like. I might shoot this, and if I don't, he just kind of eats up the space then and attacks his guy, um, I think, with a lot more aggression that we've seen uh, when the opportunity presents itself. So everybody's a threat, and there is, like, a has to be accounted for um, so that they haven't lost, like, the we don't have enough weapons out there. It doesn't feel like that mm -hmm. ever, um, even without Cat. Um, and it is because they're playing with great space and movement, and everybody's being aggressive. So you have to account for all five players, which for an opposing defense is really tough to do. I, I think there's been times with this group that the spacing has messed things up like that the, the, the spacing hasn't been good but it's only for a few possessions and then they sub someone out i think sure. about like the the cleveland game at the beginning they're clearly trying to go to nas a lot and he had nyang on him i think and so they're like okay you know how do we let's find ways to just get nas downhill you know by any means and what was happening was you know rudy's 
Rudy was there at the rim, which meant Jared Allen was too. So they like pulled Nas out, went to Kyle. And then like once Jared Allen got out of the game, they went back to Nas. There's just, I mean, that was last night's game against Golden State, the rotations and moving all around. We, I, I, after the break, let's do like a whole Nas Kyle thing. But the, the freedom it feels like the coaching staff now has to be yeah. able to just be like, okay, wait a minute. We'll, we'll get back to you, Nas. We'll get back to you, Kyle, here, rather than like a commitment to playing cat for 10 straight minutes and just kind of being like, oh, we got to, we just kind of got to deal with, if cat's trying to drive here, Rudy's guy's going to be there, but cat's cat. So like, even if that makes it a little bit worse, we'll just sort of live with it. There's just this like fungibility that they have now that I think is helping them put whatever they need more on the floor, spacing, attackers, shooters, whatever. Um, and they're, none of them are as good at that as Carl is, but you can like throw a little bit more of this there. You can throw a little bit more of that. It's, it feels like Chris Finch and Mike Honoria are like cooking a little bit more uh, with with rotations now that now that cats out. Yeah, I don't think like it's hard to convey this because it sounds stupid, but it's just the reality. Like there are like if you any stars you have on your team, coaches do kind of have to like adhere to certain things for them. You know, yeah, like, and this, this, this is going to play this is for this, Rudy too. Like this, this is for, it's, it's yeah, it's for Rudy, Rudy has Carl, to play those times. Yep, and uh, mm -hmm. and every team has multiple of these players you have to play them this many minutes you probably have to close with them like at least 95 percent of the time and you better have a really good reason for the five percent you didn't because it is such a personality thing and especially in the regular season there is no reason unless things are going really bad to ruffle feathers um there's really not and you could say we lost this game because of this and it's like right. yeah but guess what that's better than like losing call you know mm -hmm. like yeah. it, that really is a part of the equation but when you get like a and like you said we'll get to the Nas Kyle thing but when you get when you have it's Nas and Kyle guess what those guys don't have like that stature um I don't know if I'd say ego because I'm not trying to say the other guys do have it but like superstars are going to have more of an ego anyway mm -hmm. like um where Anyone Nas and would. Kyle would, uh, yes, yeah, yes exactly would. right it's right human. yeah uh I was just having this conversation the other night about how whenever somebody says they're humbled by success I'm like no you're not nobody ever is uh but yeah, like like stars have ego and it is like a it's I don't know if Carl would be always OK, always getting subbed out for like defensive situations the last three minutes being like, yeah, we just thought we needed to match up defensively. So you're out where Nas, it's like you're out. And Nas is like, OK, you know, like that is what it is. That that's that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that's not a knock on Carl. That's how stars are treated in the NBA. And that's how and it makes sense. Uh, so and I just think like. You said the coaches like with the rotations. I also think they've had more opportunities to be like, this thing is a little bit more malleable. Um, so we can try different things like like the guard guard pick and roll, like Ant going out there and setting screens and getting him into different positions. Like right. those are just things you can do when it's just a bunch of guys out there, like different guards. And you can experiment to be like, this might work. Hey, we wanted to get to this, but it's hard to do it when Carl and Rudy are out there with Ant to then have Ant be the screener. Um I, I just think, like you said, they're cooking. Like, they're getting to try different things, and we're really kind of seeing them get to flex their coaching muscles of, like, we're not stuck to anything. We're not married to, like, anything right now. So let's do the things that we've talked about in the past and been like, hey, it'd be cool if we got to this someday. I mean, you're seeing it. It's the different. It's the five out looks. It's, like I said, like, Ant getting in the screen game and maybe sometimes getting a short roll like he did with, like, minute 10 left last night, and then the short roll turned into a pass down to Rudy, led to two free throws, like, it's putting guys in different spots that they aren't in usually and defenses aren't used to seeing them in. So they don't really, really have like this great plan of attack for it. Um, it it's, and that kind of goes back to the coaching thing in general, where I think the coaching staff's has done a really great job since Carl's been out. Uh, and part of that is like, it doesn't mean they were bad at other times when the offense was stuck. It means sometimes it's no, it's they were nice literally just freedom, as good. It was literally you know? just yeah. as good. Like, right. It, it, right. It's just now. And, and the, the hopeful thing is now you've experimented with some of these things. And now right. once Carl's back, hopefully you can reintegrate that. Like the Kyle at the five, having that having to happen against Denver. Right. I'm kind of like, I'm pretty interested by that. Yeah, I realize yeah. it's would be very situational. You would have never seen Kyle at the five, literally, unless all three of those guys, you know, right. were were out. So uh it yeah, they're it seems like they're they're having fun with it and they're learning uh about themselves, the, the, the coaching staff and the team as a, as a whole. Let's grab our first break. Uh, today's show is brought to you by your home improvement company. Um, if you do have some home improvement needs, you're thinking about doing this spring, 
Um, do keep your home improvement company uh, on your mind. Keep it in the Wolves family. We always say they have a deal on windows, um, two windows, two free this month, and it's zero down, zero interest, zero payments uh, till 2025. They're also really quick, like with their bathroom um, renovations, they can get it done in as little as one day. Oftentimes, if you've ever had a home renovation, these things can take months and months to happen. Uh, it could be a complete bathroom makeover or just a simple bath or shower conversion. Um, and it's, it is just going to be done quickly. So do keep uh, your home improvement company uh, on your mind. Again, it's zero down, zero interest, no payments till 2025 on anything here. You can go to yhic.com or if you want to call to set up a consultation, you can call 844-270-7180. Your home improvement company where it's your home made better. And then quickly, today's show is also brought to you by Prize Picks. Um, I know a lot of you have been, you know, checking that out with with college basketball. They have it for March Madness. They already have plenty of those um, up for this coming Thursday and Friday. It's it's daily fantasy. It's a fun way to uh, be looking at different. It's just kind of fun to see what people are projected uh, to do and find where you agree or disagree we've been talking about you know i think there's some good things that if you've been watching the wolves you understand like who where these roles are where these opportunities uh come to happen to get to get more points more stats whatever it might be so go to pricepicks.com or the prize picks app to play daily fantasy and use promo code dane for a 100 dollars sign up bonus all right, Jace, um, let's talk about the Nas and Kyle thing um, in a little bit more more depth here. It's, it's funny, like, whenever Kyle Anderson is in, and I was in this boat kind of at some point in the second half, too, where you're like, well, Nas kind of feels like the whole offense, you know, or like him and Ant feel like the whole offense, but then they end up going, you know, with with Kyle Anderson more, and you're just kind of looking at Nas's minute total, and you're like, this, I thought he was a starter now. I mean, Nas... Nas started the Cleveland game next to Gobert. So Nas at the four. That was the first time they went to that. But in the second half of the Cleveland game, Kyle starts. Uh, they made a, again, they cooked. They they made a, a, a pivot there. Nas starts the Golden State game at the four, but Kyle Anderson closes the game. Um, and I think they're just really comfortable with it. Just like talking to Nas. And, you know, he wouldn't say to me or to you, like, I'm pissed that I'm yeah, not getting. right. But I, I genuinely, for whatever, whatever this is worth, like, I don't think Nas was angry that his minutes were, were limited in the fourth there. And honestly, given the opponent, given that they believed and they did the scouting to know that they wanted Kyle Anderson on the floor uh, when Clay Thompson was out there and Clay Thompson closed the game, they just went with that. And it, uh, it largely worked there. Those two are splitting the minutes at the four and a little bit more than that. I think I had Kyle's at like 29 minutes a game in this time and cat or and Nas is at is at 28. Obviously, that's a little bit about guys who have been injured, but they're and they're the not just splitting. Yeah. yeah, right. Like it it's enough. Those guys are gonna both play around like close to to 30. Nas probably a little bit more, more times than not. Um I think again, given the spacing and the handling and the things we we're talking about the elements of Kyle Anderson's game that was making us be like, I don't know if just having his sure handedness, whatever is really worth it. Like he isn't costing them in the ways that he was three months ago, which we were on here, you know, being lamenting consistently. It's, it's worked a lot better other than Jordan McLaughlin and Rudy Gobert. Since Kat's been out, Kyle Anderson has the third best net rating on the team, the offense and defense, are have both been better with Kyle on than Nas has been on. It's just working. And I think that's, you know, I think that's enough. Maybe at some point they're going to make a wrong move or wrong, you know, pivot and it's going to cost them a game. But thus far, the Nas and Kyle split has just kind of worked. It's kind of the reason I think that they haven't, you know, missed Cat as much as we maybe thought they would have. Yeah, and I, I frankly like I like that we've seen Nas start, and it doesn't even matter to me if he starts the third because I do think like there's a lot to just like starting the game and getting the offense kind of kick started. Um, and last night they Great needed point. it because the Kyle times were so rough. The first yeah, it three minutes of games when he's finding started. a rhythm, like when when the off team already kind of has a rhythm or whatever, Kyle can kind of 
you know, kind of transition in pretty easily there. But even like last night, there were a lot of times where it was like, I don't know, the first quarter was so rough with all the turnovers and everything, but Nas was a Band-Aid for it, right? Like, and the, the shots Nas were getting, like those possessions weren't bad. Like they were getting decent looks out of it. And often it was out of ball movement. It wasn't like Nas made something out of nothing, but mm -hmm. uh, he just has that burst where like you can overcome where you can stay within striking distance when you are just turning the ball over left and right and leaving leading to other opportunities the other way so i like his spark you know you talk about a spark off the bench like they need a spark as the ball tips off um yeah. oftentimes um and nas nas is somebody who can kind of reward any early ball movement where you're like okay yeah this is working for us um where sometimes if the ball is moving early but like it's it, it kind of getting stuck because it's ending up in the guy's hands like maybe a kyle missed three or something and good ball movement that leads to missed shots especially early in a game can be kind of deflating as you fall behind like eight nothing and it's like i don't feel like we're playing bad but maybe i need to press more sure. uh, so i think Naj just like giving them offensive success really does kind of get them rolling in general on that end of the court and then other guys can kind of fill in as needed yeah i just i i think they're they've just been able to to feel it out and then kyle's value defensively i mean i guess let's talk a little bit about like golden state specifically and sure. matching up with with them which one i mean Britt and I were going through it just kind of loosely in the last episode of like, who would you most want to play of the, you know, 10 teams and golden state was my answer. I was like, Oh, you know, like they're, but they're playing better now. Like, let's see how this game goes on Sunday, you know? And I think we've now affirmed with having beaten them all three times this season, that that would be the most, the best case scenario of yeah. the 10 teams that are currently in the top 10. Um, just, that, that it's golden state. Yeah, I agree because like golden state, brought it last night like they were very attentive i think that was kind of like one of their better games mm -hmm. sure they had a couple of plays they would like back but they played with a lot of like effort and focus and like defensively they were really getting after it mm -hmm. uh i think they were doing a lot of things they wanted to do and you still come up short um and i think that is kind of when like a realism comes in it seems like in like their post game comments of like don't have it you know like mm -hmm. Draymond was like we got bad habits and stuff it's like you're just when you feel like you bring it and you still can't deliver um yeah. that's really deflating that is when we're like we're just not as good as them um and i think over the case over the course of a seven game series like i don't know if golden state would win more than one frankly yeah. and i i said it last night like i just think this is one where they just don't have anything for rudy so they either have to commit so many resources to like you know whether that be the glass or like him rolling like they just don't have any size that it opens up everything else if, and then once they have to cover for everything else then it's easy for rudy um they just that's yeah. something where it's like physically they just don't have it uh so as long as minnesota plays like smart basketball they should be able to expose that more times than not yeah i, I think it's uh encouraging also from a king's matchup perspective of just one of the areas of concern with this team in the playoffs right with given their size is their ability to chase shooters and teams that play fast and move east west it's not a good defensive the kings or the well particularly the warriors are not like a a great defensive matchup for ant right he doesn't have someone to just guard in isolation it's all the split actions it's all chasing 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 and i think you know we talk about the kings as as somewhat concerning in that they do some of that same chase sort force you to to chase them sort of thing i think the difference there and why just because the wolves have beaten the warriors handily three times i don't i wouldn't it doesn't give me a ton more confidence against the kings it's gonna be some it's the to your point with the rudy thing like they have some bonus and and it's not you were talking about having something for guarding rudy but that but sabonis on the floor gives a lot more attention for what Rudy has right. to do defensively right. there. And it's why the Kings, again, if we're going through that list of ranking teams, it's why they're a harsher, harder matchup uh, than, than the war, than the Warriors are. But still, I think broadly watching them play, particularly without cat against a team that forces you to chase them. You have more, confidence in their ability to be able to do that if they beat the kings in the game that cap missed at the beginning of the season and kyle started at the four right like this group is equipped if cat isn't on the floor to be able to to chase pretty well and not that cat being on the floor ruins their odds of that obviously that's just the difficult spot that they've they put cat in now that he you know plays power forward for this team but i don't know just i guess how overall do you because we talked about that a lot at the early in the season, like, oh, you know, Cat and Nas chasing. Um, how how has that sort of evolved for you? 
Yeah, I mean, Cat's a little better than I thought. Nas is like really good at it. Um, and Kyle's surprisingly sports. really good at that too. Kyle for... just knows how to navigate. Yeah. You know, it's like doesn't have to be great at like it's some. That is something where like chasing you can if you just smart and know how to position yourself and like that you have to run less like he's not just like chasing his tail out there. He's like, yeah. he's going here. I'm just going to take this little cut to beat him here. And like Kyle's just really smart. So like he and he's not chasing staff, you know, he but he's chasing other guys that, you know, are good players. And but he just kind of knows where you're going. Uh, so it's easier for him to get there. He's like, I'll take this route. Mm -hmm. uh, and Nas is just like really quick, uh, you know, like which never would have said, you know, a couple of years ago, but he's, he's just really quick. And so Carl is not bad at it but he's worse at it than those guys so it mm -hmm. does become a little bit more of a liability which is like you know they've lost the two kings games that carlos played and then they won the one in sacramento uh that he didn't and just like last year without carl they handled the kings a lot um mm -hmm. even like in the midst of a 500 season they beat the kings um so that that is it's interesting something. man i mean th that yeah. is that as likely of an opponent i think if we're just like we do all the time of like, who would you want to play? Who would you wouldn't want to yeah, play? Yeah, like, the reality the most, is, yeah, it's the, probably the, the Kings are the most likely. Dallas, 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 Phoenix, Sacramento seems statistically yeah, the most yeah. likely team that they will play. One of those. I teams. mean, it just sure looks like they're going to end up. If, if I was going to like put a pin on their seat right now, I would say they're going to be the two seed. Uh, just Oklahoma City does have some tough games coming up here. Um, Denver doesn't. Denver plays Minnesota twice. Uh, so you know, who knows? Minnesota could. You know, if you I guess they one kind of control two, their own destiny in a they way, with they do, they definitely do like control their own destiny in that sense. Um, but it's too in Denver. But. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, and and you know, Denver's playing really well, and even resting guys and still winning games right now. Yeah. Um, and through the soft part of their schedule, which is pretty smart. So I would just say, like, most likely, just putting odds on it, I think they're going to be the two. So six is going to kind of be a little bit of a chase. Maybe the Clippers fall back into that. I don't think they'll fall quite far enough without figuring it out so yeah i mean say like one of those three teams will be the six and then the other two are probably going to play in that seven eight game and you're automatically getting the winner of that seven eight game so it's definitely going to be one of those three it seems like unless the clippers totally fall off the face of the earth it would like if carl has to miss the first half of the series like who better than sacramento yeah get, right then, yep. because you could at least create an argument that in that matchup you're not worse for the wear. Yeah. And this Carl doesn't pound yeah. like they're, it's not like Carl is offensively always having these amazing games against Sacramento either, at least off my head, top of my head. Yeah. Um, well, it would kind of be, you would want him to be able to sort of like abuse in the post. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In, in that matchup, Harrison Barnes or whoever, but going off of last year, and I realized last year was a calf and this one's a knee, but the one thing that really stood out once Cat came back for the play in and for the playoffs was he just didn't have the lower body strength because of course he didn't. He hadn't been able to like lift legs in yep. months. You're not in the and same, it's going to be the yeah. same physical thing, condition. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Like he's going to, when he comes back, it will probably like, you know, picture that Lakers play in game. You know, yeah. it'll be problematic from a force standpoint, but he could still probably drive and he can still for sure, you Shoot. know, sort of spot up. Right. And, and, and that's becoming maybe even more of an appetizing proposition of spotting up. You know, we talked a lot about, you know, Carl, get in the corner or shoot more threes or whatever. There's now like a better infrastructure in place, it feels like, or it's just been getting better over the course of the season for shooting opportunities, you know, and, and Carl, in theory, could sort of fold into that. But yeah, to the to the King's point, like, I hadn't really thought about that. That would that would sort of fit in real nice if you could just be like, all right, well, we don't need need cat in this matchup. So let's not let's not rush it. You know, right, whereas like if right. it's Denver, which obviously that wouldn't be the first round, but like there's other matchups that you'd be like, OK, we need Cat um, a, a lot more in, in that one than another one. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, and like if it's a Kings thing, like say like it's like, OK, we're going to wait until we go to Sacramento. We're going to take that's four more days or something. And then game three or whatever, say you're up 2-0, you'd be like, we're going to play you 20 minutes. You know, mm -hmm. as you work your way back in, like just a lot more flexibility of like, we're very confident what we can do in this matchup in the minutes in which you were not on the court. And obviously, like how the first few games played out or whatever, like how the series was going would dictate any adjustments needed. But I think they would go in confident of like, we want to use this series to work Carl back in and know that I think in the minutes where he's not on the court, we can succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, you wrote this morning um, about Mike Conley's uh, quote from the locker room last night uh, that Gobert is the offense. Uh, that stood out, I know, to both of us. Last night, I'll play that clip from Mike, and then let's talk about that. It's gravity. How much easier does that make all that?
I mean, he's he is the offense, you know, for the most part, guys don't recognize that, but um, the gravity that he has from just not even setting a screen, just rolling down the middle of the floor creates a two-on-one for us, and um, and we got to reward him when he gets those opportunities late in the games and in the post situations under the basket, but uh, he also creates, you know, two-on-one, three-point three point looks for, you know, guys who can make them, and uh, especially with our feet set and looking straight at the rim, it's, it's easy opportunity, so he's a big reason why our offense can, can get going. It's interesting, Jay. It's just kind of I just went back and watched like some of the offensive possessions in in the second half. It felt like the perfect Gobert thing where the gravity was working, but they didn't have to give him the ball that much. Yeah, that's like the best. Case. Some you got to give it to him some, and you want to give it to him some, and in the the right spots. But that second half, it was like Rudy's attracting numerous bodies once he slips, rolls, whatever, and that's just opening up Nikhil, Monte Morris. Conley, whoever shooters spotted up around that. I think that has, I don't, that I wouldn't say this is necessarily a product of cap being out or anything, but it's just gotten better over the course of the season of effectively tapping into that, you know, famous Rudy Gobert gravity sort of thing. But if you go back and you watch that second half, that was a, a real thing and it totally inspired shooting, which inspired the entire comeback, you know, particularly late third quarter early early fourth quarter last night what's what's popping to you about the the gravity element of of rudy's game yeah i mean i think it, it is like you mentioned like they were he was taking on attention they didn't have to get on the ball like it went to made sense to give him the ball in a lot of those things like the whole idea of gravity is that he's getting two bodies on him like his guy and the ball handler's guy are like largely on him so like it would be very much forcing and a bad pass often to feed him in those situations like rudy knows he's a sacrificial lamb there to take on bodies and golden state has to commit the bodies because they don't have anybody who like physically uh can on the glass or whatever uh so contain small. rudy you know like they're way too small uh and so they have to commit bodies and now now it is just like an easy the help defender who's coming in off the corner is really the only person like deterring the ball handler so it's an easy kick out corner three whatever but one rotation down kick it out uh, make the next pass and that guy's open uh it's really easy offense um and and that is just like in matchups like that where teams have nobody for rudy um rudy gets it and the other guys seem to get it of like, yeah, this doesn't mean it's me. It doesn't mean it's Rudy. It means it's that corner three. Uh, he just opened up a lot on plays where he didn't touch the ball. Um, and that was very clear. And that, that probably is like, it probably happens a lot more in offense. And I know like we acknowledge it, but maybe don't appreciate it. Uh, the other times in which it's happening in which like it's especially right now, like guys who require the most defensive attention. It is number one is Ant and number two is is Rudy. I mean, like it, he is the one who's drawing the most bodies, creating the most two on ones just because of like, he has to be accounted for mm -hmm. and that he might score 12 points in the game where that is the case. Uh, but it literally is like, who's more likely to get two guys on him, whether he has the ball or not in the course of a possession, it goes ant Rudy. Uh, mm -hmm. so that, that it, it, like when ants not on the court and Rudy can be like your guy who is creating the mismatches, uh, creating the advantage plays where it's two on one, like that's a huge weapon for Minnesota. Like we don't have ant out here, but we're still going to get the easy shots um, because you have to account for Rudy Gobert. Well, and I think it's part of the reason why Nas is, is taking off because these teams are putting double attention on ant and situationally, at least double attention on uh, Rudy. We were, we were talking about this in the media room after the game. I'll play this clip in a second, but uh, Britt asked Rudy about a specific play where um, where Ant had been getting doubled. He went to the nail and ended up having a, a, a drop off to Rudy there. And and it was just kind of one of those situations where they were trying to go through Ant and be like, all right, here's a situation. We're trying to get you single coverage or at least like not a triple here somehow. And they put him at the nail like they always do with Cat. When Cat gets doubled in the post, remember, that was always a thing like, oh, just move him right to the free throw line. And then that's harder to double him there. They did that with Ant, still doubled him. He found Rudy uh, underneath the basket because at that point, you can't be doubling Ant and, you know, giving all that attention to Rudy. Rudy gets fouled, makes both of the free throws. There's a minute left in the game, made it. Uh, they were up by three at the time, and that made it uh, a, a five-point game there. And it's just... With those two, teams are being forced to choose a little bit, um, a little bit more. I'll, I'll play the clip and then I'll get your your thoughts on that. And Ann found you with a minute to go in the game, pulling three guys in in that underhand 
Does that happen two or three months ago, do you think? Um, probably not. Probably not. Maybe not consistently, but and to, like I said last, uh, two days ago, it took a big step, you know, and it's the main reason why we, why our offense is, you know, is getting better and better because he, he has the ball in his hands a lot. And if, if he makes those type of decisions, uh, it's unguardable, you know. The only thing they can do now is bring a second guy or a third guy. And if he makes those reads, you know, uh, they're going to have to stop doing that. They're going to have to, you know, make him, make him guard him one-on-one, -on -one and uh, we know how that goes. It, it's interesting, Jace, right? Like, Rudy's a pretty uh, close to the vest with praise guy. You know, I've picked up over the, you know, two years cover him now. In both of these games, he's made it a point to talk about Ant and Ant's playmaking, that leveling up and just him being like, this is the skeleton key. Like if Ant gets off of it in the right places, in Rudy's word, which is a little hyperbolic, we become unguardable. Um, but, you know, you get it from, from some standpoint where it at least makes you choose or just gives you a massive advantage when Ant is thinking through these things and getting off of it and still finding ways to get his 30, uh, 30 a night. I mean, this, this, this element of Ant's playmaking leveling up is talked about six different things already of the non-cat time what's happening i mean the biggest thing's ant like yep. the biggest thing is ant and what he's done in this time not just from a bucket getting standpoint but from a being the offensive fulcrum of of this 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 whole thing what what have you seen in that ant vein yeah i mean i think the second half of that second utah game and then the the Denver game the following night was some of the best basketball I've ever seen Ant play in terms of like still that offensive threat, but <clears throat> making the right play. And when the defense adjusts to like giving you more or less attention, adjusting accordingly, like, Oh, they're not doing it here. I'm going to attack or, or like I'm catching the ball second side and they're not set. I'm attacking for an easy bucket or when I'm starting the play and they're giving me all the attention, I'm going to suck it in and kick it out mm -hmm. and make the right play. Like, and that's continued. And like last night, I think, you know, like everybody remembers that late three and it was like, what was that? And like, the reality is, and I even said at the time it was like a couple of four shots, but the best player on the team is going to do that at least mm -hmm. twice in the last five minutes of a close game, right? Like that, and that is almost expected because like you have to be the threat to do that at all times. But it's part of what draws the attention. Sometimes they're not going to go. We've seen it hit some of those tough shots too. The good thing for Minnesota was it was not every time down the court. It yeah. was not. It was mixed in. Those shots are, you can live with them if they are mixed in, as long as it's not every time down, everybody's just watching. And it was doing it, I think, just enough of like, yeah, you'd like them to go down. Some of them were tough, whatever. Uh, you maintain yourself as that big threat. And then like that one playoff to Rudy, I think he caught on like the short roll and made like a really nice bounce pass yep. when, when, and gets Rudy to the free throw line. Like, so he's making, I think it was a really good balance last night of even like the ones that are forced that you maybe like back, they were just mixed into good offense. Like their clutch mm -hmm. time offense last night was pretty good in general. And I agree like 1000%, like he's been, that's everything we've been waiting for and everything we've kind of been asking for and everything like Chris Finch, Mike Conley and their comments has been hinting at like, we need that, um, yep. you know, like, and, and for months, for, for, months, for months, the whole for season Finch, for yeah. Finch, it's been multiple seasons uh, yeah. for, my, for Mike and uh, Mike's joined the party this year. Even Rudy's joined the party this year, mm -hmm. uh, probably even last year as well of like, that's what we need. And now they're getting it. And that is the biggest thing now of like, it has figured that out. And that's the biggest cat question to me of like, mm. okay, the ball gets sticky with Ant and cat in the past. Um, and I think their stickiness kind of plays off one another's stickiness. I think they kind of like amp each other up in that area of like, he's been sticky with it. I haven't even seen the ball in three possessions. I feel like I need to get a shot here because I haven't taken one and we're not scoring and I need to turn the tide. Where right now it's like Ant knows I'm getting it back next possession. Like if I, if I get off it here and I make the right play, I think that does make it a little bit easier alongside, you know, the floor being spread and everybody really – doing the job um but yeah oh, and, and, you, and you hope that cat can just kind of be like it again right. at least initially just emulating the nas stuff yep. just like you are he's not gonna get a ton of attention like i don't think cat's gonna get special attention when he comes back one just given that he's gonna be coming back from an injury yep. and two where he normally gets special attention is in the post and i just don't think that is going to I would be shocked if they continue to post up cat as much once he gets back as they did before he, he went out. It's just, it's never been a great thing, you know, for this offense because he gets double, not one-on-one. -on -one, we know cat, like it's, 
And if he gets position early, he's dangerous in the post. But if they're able to push him out, which they'll be more likely to do, or if they're able to just double it, it just kind of sticks up the the you know the the whole offense. So if Cat can like that's the biggest thing. If I'm the assistant coach or I'm Cat or I'm whoever, it's like, how do we convince Cat to start playing like Nas in the playoffs and then like put another brick on there, put another brick on there and like make it grow out, you know, effectively. And there is a blueprint. The blueprint is is there because offensively, there's not a huge difference between Cat and Nas's games other than how decisively they play. Right. Like the, right. Yeah. the archetypes of their games are, yes. are similar. Yeah. Like he yeah. can't can do everything Nas can do, you know, he yeah. just got to do it quicker. Right. Um, and like, like for last night, there's it, like Rudy scored 10 of his 17 in the fourth. Like it's no coincidence that a lot of like that success late in the game, Rudy scoring and it's when ants on the court, like, because it totally is like you mentioned, like you can't be giving Rudy all this attention while you're doubling ant. So like, while Rudy with the unit before ant got on the court is taking all the attention and it's leading to a bunch of threes for Nikhil for Monte. Well, now ants on the court and he's going to get the attention over Rudy. And now Rudy's going to score 10 points in the fourth. So like, that's those two playing off one another and ant being willing to make those passes. Like, that not not just for man's decision making, but just trusting Rudy Moore as we've seen, which has really grown all season. Uh, that's made that a more powerful combination. It's still not like those two are like this amazing pick and roll combination, but they don't have to be. They really don't. No. Um, like Mike Conley and Rudy. That can Gobert be a year can, from now thing. Or yeah, whatever. yeah, like, yeah. It's like for now, Mike Conley and Rudy Gobert can be the pick and roll combination because yep. there are plenty of other ways to get in, involved um, and get mm-hmm. him the ball where he is the focal point, and Rudy can kind of just be a really nice outlet for him. Um, and a lot of times that can be like a Mike Rudy pick and roll, and now we're getting it and we're swinging it over to Ant, and Ant's attacking, or it can be Ant in the screen or roll with Rudy down in the dunker. A lot of different things they can do, but just the general trust um, and Rudy like being able to finish in the way he has, and Ant making the good decisions like. It does make it not maybe not unguardable. Uh, it's yeah. not like it's like the number one offense in the NBA, but far less guardable um, than it, than it was for big chunks of the season. Yeah, and if it does force a team to ultimately guard Ant one on one, like Rudy said, like we know how that goes. Yeah, like and I don't think any team would actually get to that point. But then you know if they do, they just pick it apart until they do, uh, and then let Ant go. There's a there's a progression to this. Right that in theory could show up in a playoff series where they're like, you know, it's like games one and two, it's this, and then they shift and then it's ant or it's, car, you know, there, there's a way the, the blueprint for having a really good offensive playoff series has just come into focus for me, like over the past few weeks. Yeah. That's I, obviously all year. We've been like, I, I don't know what that looks like. And now we're seeing it. I, I do love like late in the game. And the only one to, it, I think that one time as far out of the last three minutes, maybe I, I don't remember every possession, but bringing Ant to be the screener there um, and getting him involved in a position where he can't be like doubled. Mm-hmm. And yet he is clearly a very focal point of the play. I mean, and his gravity is is either like being used or or it's freed up where he's in space um, without just having him dribble, have to like dribble the ball 20 times like that. I thought that was great. Yeah. And I think that is something they can go more to. Absolutely. I, I don't remember if I, if, and it probably <laughs> wasn't. But remember when Mike just had that one in the fourth quarter? just total clear path to to the lane. I don't remember if Ant was the screener there, if he was up there, but there's just going to be some, if you include Ant in the action, even as like a decoy or accidentally becomes a decoy, there's just going to be breakdowns because in the heat of the moment, you're going to overcorrect to guarding Anthony Edwards to have it yep. sent to that direction. Just I, I, so I think that's something we should be looking for because we were joking in the media room last night. I joked that that's the first, ball screen i've ever seen ant set but like that might be a thing for this he did it in utah too the game where he's really good he did it in utah a couple times as well in that game when when they went when they lost nas and they just had kyle in there and they started that second half and he ant was the ball screener a few times and i was like wow and it worked then too um so i think that's something they could definitely utilize more um just because i want to this will be our last thing but just because i want to give it more than like 45 seconds in passing i mean just the the point guards, the guards right now, backups, but I'll include, you know, Mike Conley in there as, as well. The, and it's not, I said it before, it's not just the shooting, but J-Mac at 49%, Conley at 43% from three, Morris 42% from three, Kill Alexander Walker 38% from three. I mean, this is just such a win. It is such a, such a win for this team that one, that th- those guys are just all being respected, right? There's the differentiation of like, are you being guarded on the three-point line? Yes. 
because those are good enough shooters now and or they're going to punish you if you if you give them a little bit of space i think for the spacing issues that this team has and that finch has said have weren't an issue last night and haven't been an issue recently to me it's so much about those four guys doing that and having it not be you know shake milton like it was earlier in the season or kyle anderson needing to be a three in a spacer there like this is a huge huge win um and it's changing the way in which this team can play offensively and it's why the offense is getting better a, a big part in why the offense is getting better even though you've lost um lost carl anthony towns i just want to make sure to hit on those guys that that has been absolutely massive for this team. And I think Chris Finch is developing a love affair with Monte Morris in a way similar to Kyle Anderson and just that feeling safe with him on the floor, knowing what they're what they're going to do. The Morris trade has been, you know, I, I don't want to say as good as the Nikhil Alexander Walker one has been because that was such a win last year. But it's reminding me of Nikhil at this time last season. We're like, oh, this is a guy in the rotation that's gonna help, you know. Um, just yeah, major credit to that group. Yeah, and the thing is, like Mike Monte, J Mac, like they are all major beneficiaries of ball movement and creators of ball movement. So when they are not the only creator, mm -hmm. um, and there are other guys who are very actively promoting ball movement, and they can sometimes be on the receiving end of it as well. Like they all, like they are, they are all kind of creating this tide that's raising each other's boats. Yeah. I mean, they really are. Like they are, yeah, they plays all off of each other. Are, I like that. Yeah, yeah, they're making one another better. Um, so like it is like the multi guard look just makes them all like better basketball players. They mm -hmm. obviously like it works because they're shooting the ball so well. And like there will be some games where they do not knock down open shots, like mm -hmm. because that's just what happens with any shooter, even great shooters. Right. Like they miss shots. J Mac will have an over four game. Like the best shooters in the NBA have games like that. But right now they are shooting at such a high clip, and like the general shooting success uh, seems sustainable because the looks are so good, and the looks are good because the ball movement has been so great. Um, because they're all doing it and they're all promoting it. And like, it's consistently good ball movement because that's who they are as players. So it, it only doesn't work. Like J Mac looks bad when he is on the court with four guys or at least three guys who aren't playing his brand of basketball. Sure. Mike Conley and Monte Morris love playing J Mac's brand of basketball. Like, you know, that, that is what they live for. So they are like, they are really making one another better out there and succeeding. And I really do think it's another hat tip to the coaching staff of like, Let's go to it. Let's trust it. Let's ride it. Um, you know how easy it would have been to put J-Mac back on the bench and have TJ Warren playing these minutes because you just don't think you can play multiple point guards. Yeah. Um, you don't think size-wise it's going to work out, but they are trusting their best players and that these guys will figure it out and riding hot hands and all of these things to where they are playing three point guards at a time because they're like, they're three good basketball players. We'll figure it out. It's a, a staple of there Finch's coaching. Paid off. It's, yep. it's, he's never been, you know, strict with positions and this and that. His... His goal, which, you know, if you can make it work is great. It's like, let's have our best players on the floor as, you know, as much as we can and make as few accommodations based on minutes and matchups and positions and all that. Like, I mean, that's when it doesn't work, it really doesn't work. And we saw that sure. a lot last season. Yep. Um, but they were kind of thrown into that more out of desperation. This isn't like full desperation, because like you said, you could go to TJ Warren um, you know, there, there's other options that have been passable that they could go to, but they're like, nope, we are going to, <laughs> those guys are all point guards, man. And Kyle Anderson sort of is too. Like, and they're finding a way it's cool to like that. It's that many ball handlers and they, they always still feel like ball handlers. Like Mike Conley's playing a little bit more too. He's looking like pin downs and all this and that, but like, you still think of Mike Conley as a point guard. Right. I don't think of Monte Morris as a two guard. When he's out there, he handles Putty, J Mac, Nikhil, all of that. It's like they haven't been pigeonholed into something else. It's the best players and asking the best players to do what they do most. So I think that's a, a good theme out of this is the, and maybe that's just obvious that the coaching staff deserves a, a ton of credit for making this work without Cat and taking probably some bolder steps than you maybe would have thought of when this when this all uh, this all came together. We got anything else? Anything else we want to hit on? We yeah, go? I think I just want to, like, out of that that thing, just, like, it is also a credit to the players. Like, I always, mm -hmm. you know, the coaches were trying it for sure. The players were making it work because they all, the players, 
Monte Morris has been really good, even on the ball defensively. Like J Mac, we know is a super scrappy defender. Like when you're small, you think like we might get abused here. Those guys have too much pride to get abused. They just do. Mm -hmm. um, and so they make it work themselves. And where you look at it and you go, there's no way these guys can defend, but they have a lot of pride and put in a lot of effort and intensity in that end to to be good enough. Especially, Dude, like, and Rudy's I think I think Mike doing the shooting guard pin down thing, running off, flying off of screens. Right. He doesn't want to do that. Right. That is not his preferred means of playing basketball. That's yeah. a lot more physically taxing. It's yep. not how he's always played, like almost ever in, in his career. But he's like, okay, like this gets J-Mac on the floor, who's making half of his threes right now. This gets Monte out there, who's, you know, doing this or allows us to play. Like, it, I guess that's just sacrifice, right? You know, and, and I probably Mike, more than anyone, who's the starting point guard of this team, was like, yeah, cool. I'll play way less point guard than, you know, I've ever been asked to do because it's the, it's the best thing for the team. So yeah, and he's capable and he's capable of doing it. Absolutely. Succeeding it. Like these guys are willing and capable and across that the roster gonna right catch now, people by surprise in the playoffs that Mike Conley can, can and will do that. Sorry. Cut you off. Yeah. He'll test you. Like all these guys are willing and capable to do just about everything right mm -hmm. now. Like that is the best part of this roster is like so versatile in that everybody can do a little bit of everything. Like yeah. Nikhil can hit the open shot and he can attack you off the bounce, you know, like mm -hmm. these types of things where like, like last year when things didn't work, like Dilo took away a lot of like your flexibility in terms of like what you can do sure. with the lineup at any given point, because he was the defensive thing you were covering up. And we've seen this year, like when you don't have anything defensively, you're covering up mm -hmm. the different things you can do. Um, or if cats your worst defender, then you're really good defense. Yep. Um, so like, there's a lot of things where like, and right now, they only uh, in general on the team and he is not doing it nearly as much either in ant, but like there were times where like offensively it was going to look bad because you had two ball stoppers on the court and, right. and, and cat and like now ant with just one, he's the only ball stopper and he's not even doing it as much. And I think it's because the ball is generally moving. So he's just kind of maintaining the flow of it too. And really getting right. the rhythm of that. And we've seen just how his play has went from like really high to like really high. Mm -hmm. Uh, so now the key is for, like you said, for Carl to show that he is willing and capable to not be a ball stopper on offense sure. and keep it rolling too. Um, because like when, as we've seen, when everybody on the floor is willing and capable to make sacrifices and do different things, uh, you just, you play really good basketball. Yeah. You do. When you have like talent. They played, yeah. Last night they played really good basketball. I don't know how to say it. Like they took what I believe, like I know Steph didn't go like Inferno, but like that was, I think as far as just like playing sharp and really bringing it, that was like the Warriors best shot i really do think that i thought the warriors played really hard and well and it wasn't enough i'm like that was a really good win for the wolves because the wolves are just playing really well right now yeah he's jace frederick um follow him on twitter at jace frederick um read him over in the pioneer press uh like i said earlier he wrote about uh well in addition to his gamer wrote about um the go the value of gobert and being the offense and that gravity so you can uh, check that out obviously by going to uh, the Pioneer Press's website or TwinCities.com, right? I always mess that up. TwinCities.com. It uh, is our website. It's not it, false when you say that. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter or just Twitter. That's if you I type in PioneerPress.com, it goes to Twin Cities. Yeah, so. okay. Okay, okay. Um, so check that out uh, with Jace. Obviously, he's uh, been doing a great job covering this team uh, all season. We mixed up the order uh, a little bit. Chris had an interview uh, to do this morning, so Jace took the Monday spot. We're going to kind of make this whole week patched together in some sort of way i think maybe we'll do chris on uh wednesday when we normally do chris and then i'm going or when we normally do jace i'm going to denver so maybe try and squeeze brit in uh before before i do that but this is gonna be a fun week uh we are at the home stretch of the season an important stretch i think for you know keeping this momentum going uh for this for this wolves team and honestly a real a real fight uh for this one two and three is 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 playing out the the thunder lose on on sunday night so the wolves are like a half game back from that and close behind denver as well so it's gonna be a fun uh final few weeks here uh of the season and we'll be uh yeah we'll be all over it on the pod jace i appreciate you doing it man thanks man always fun all right uh until maybe wednesday or something uh with chris uh he's jace i'm dane peace out I won't feel it, man. I hope it never stop, yeah. Green it hot so you can find me in the crowd, yeah, yeah. Don't let standards ever, ever bring.